What's up photographers, welcome to another tutorial. Now this is my complete Lightroom workflow from start to finish. So this isn't like a traditional photo editing tutorial. This is the process from ending a photo shoot and taking those raw photos on your computer all the way up to when you deliver photos to your client. This tutorial is tailored specifically for wedding professionals, but it also be super valuable for anyone that deals with a lot of photos. I've designed this workflow to be flexible enough to use your iPad, have fun, edit some photos, go to a coffee shop, be an artist, but also to give you the organization and robustness of like a desktop environment. Personally, I'm a huge fan of editing photos on the iPad it's just such a different experience from the laptop. It makes me feel like I'm an artist. It's just fun to go to the coffee shop, put on some headphones and just play around, edit some photos in Lightroom. But there is one huge caveat of using the iPad to edit photos is it's not practical to run your entire business on. And what ends up happening is your iPad and your cloud storage and Lightroom starts to fill up. And the only way to free up space is to delete albums. And that is not a good practice because you'll delete some albums and then a year later, you're gonna wanna go back to a certain photo and you're like, oh crap, it's not there anymore. Then you have to find the raw photos again, import them again. It's just not the best way to run a business. That's why I've structured this using Lightroom, Lightroom for iPad and Lightroom Classic to create a cohesive photography business workflow. Be patient, this is a long, uh, arduous, tedious tutorial, but if you follow what I'm saying in this tutorial, you will up your photography game so much. But let's not waste any more time. Let's just get straight into the tutorial with importing photos. All right, so I'm at the computer. I just shot a wedding yesterday, so I'm gonna be importing the photos right now. And so right now the importing process is actually super important. This is where we get the basic structure and organization. So the first thing I do when I import photos is create a folder to put those photos in. Now I use this program called Post Haste and it's a free program. And if you're on Mac, I recommend downloading it. Basically what it does is create a folder structure for you so that you can keep everything nice and organized. I'll show you how it works. So right here, I'm in the post haste and I have templates and I am going to do photo shoot. So that's kind of like my wedding photography template and I'm gonna put what number it is. All right, so this is number three. So I have, so this is my third wedding of the year. So I'm gonna put number three, I'm gonna put the client and I'm going to create project. And I'm gonna save that to wedding photos 2024. All right, so now that we have created like the folder structure using post haste, I'm gonna take all the photos and drag them in to the raw section. So as you can tell, if I click on the raw folder, it's importing all of the photos onto here. I'm going to start pulling selects or making selects. And for me making selects, I use another program called Photo Mechanic. Now I know this is like a Lightroom tutorial, but just bear with me here. These programs are just really for specialized things. So Photo Mechanic is just a really fast, snappy program that you can quickly make selects and organize photos. Um, you can use Adobe Bridge if you want, uh, or you can even use Lightroom for this. I just find this the fastest way to do it. And since I process so many photos in a month, uh, I have to use third-party programs like this because they're just so much quicker. And now, so when I'm pulling selects, I'm going to select, I'm gonna put a color for just photos I wanna keep in the catalog. I'm going to put a color for photos I want on the iPad. So I keep them separate, you see how this works? So on this photo, obviously, you know, so I'll start going through the photos and start making selects. So if you look on the top left of the screen as me sorting through the photos, I can click one, which means red. And then I keep going through, let's say I want like one on my iPad, I push three, uh, if I want it to be on the iPad. And basically three just means, or green just means banger, and red just means I wanna keep it. So red and green are both gonna go on the full catalog, but only the green photos are gonna go on the iPad. And I do this because the iPad space fills up and it gets cumbersome and you don't wanna put all your photos on the iPad, you just wanna put the bangers. And this is really cool because if you have your iPad, it's on the cloud and it's full of all your best photos, Anywhere you go, if you need a photo or something, you can just log into the Adobe Cloud and find it. So I use Lightroom as more of like my portfolio photos. And I use Lightroom Classic as like my workhorse wedding album creation. Do you know what I mean? So yes, let's just, I'm gonna fast forward this. I'm gonna sort through all these photos and pick the ones I like. And then we're going to import those into Lightroom. So I'm gonna fast forward. I'll see you in a second. All right, so I'm almost done pulling selects. And uh, I didn't really pick too many greens from this one. Uh, 
but I want to tell you guys so when you're pulling selects like if it's like a if it's the out of a 10 rating if it's like a 5 out of 10 you want to select the photo what you're doing when you're doing selects for the first time with wedding photos is just getting rid of all the crap so because you can filter through it more when you get into Lightroom so as you can tell I'm like kind of going through these and some of them I really like, like that one, you know, I'll select it. So also when I'm pulling selects, uh, you know, for the iPad and here, I'm also thinking about what the Instagram carousel is going to look like. So I like to make a carousel in, the, in an app called Scroll and we'll get to that. But when I'm sorting through photos and I'm putting a three on them or a green, I'm thinking like, okay, what am I gonna make the scroll when I put this on Instagram? Okay, so I just pulled all the selects. So now this is when I import them into Lightroom, so going to X out of here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my weddings. I'm going to go to, and this has like all of my wedding catalogs from the thing, whatever. All right. So I'm going to create a new album in Lightroom. So now I'm going to go up here. As you can tell, there's like these things. I'm going to hide the unpicked. And I'm going to hide the red. So highlight all these green photos. I'm going to drag them into here. All right, so now I'm importing these photos onto Lightroom. These photos are now going to sync onto the iPad. So I'm just gonna leave this running. I only imported 31 out of this small wedding photos to my iPad. So those are just the ones that I wanna edit and I'm gonna use for like website, Instagram, things like that. All right, let's just recap everything I just did. Okay, so first thing I did was I used post haste to create a folder on an external drive. You wanna keep all of your photos on an external hard drive. So when it fills up, you can just buy a new one. I am using a RAID hard drive system. If you don't have that, just buy a 10 terabyte hard drive to store all of your photos. After I created the folder and imported the raw photos onto the external device, I started making selects. And I started making selects by choosing red or green in photo mechanic. Red just means I like it. Green means it's a banger photo and it's going to go on my iPad. So once I've created uh, the selects, I now move them into a separate folder called selects so that in my archive, I have the raw photos that I didn't use and the selects photos I use. And the reason I do that is you don't wanna delete anything, especially when you're dealing with weddings because a year down the road, a client might say, hey, like, did you have a picture of my grandma's hat or something really weird like that that you did not select? And you can be like, yeah, let me go back and check to see if I got that. And so that means all your bases are covered. And this is important when you're importing photos as a wedding professional is you really wanna be super tidy, super neat, and you wanna make sure you have an archive of everything you ever shot. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but trust me, if you implement this workflow, it'll make your business and your life so much easier. With that said, let's keep going. All right, so now that I've put everything on my archive and I have a nice, neat file structure for the archive, I'm going to take the selected photos and put them on a different drive. Now, usually you wanna put this on an SSD or a drive that is a lot faster. You don't necessarily edit with your archive. So my RAID is just there to back up things. It's not there to edit off of. This is a concept that you'll have to learn when dealing with a lot of photos. I have a, a MacBook or a Mac Studio with about four terabytes of storage, so I don't need an external SSD. I just copy everything onto the internal storage of my Mac, and then when I'm done with it, I delete it. So I'm gonna go into, I have a projects folder, and I'm gonna go into my weddings, and I'm gonna create a new folder. And now I'm going to take all the photos from selects, and I'm going to put them in to this and because this is the drive I'm going to be editing from. Um, if I did edit off of my uh, RAID, it would just be a lot slower. So that's why you just wanna copy the photos onto a faster drive that you're gonna use to edit from Lightroom Classic. Cool. All right, so now that I have all of the selected photos imported onto my hard drive, I'm gonna create a new folder in here that's just gonna be called project file, or I'm gonna be calling it Okay, so now that I have transferred the selects onto the drive I'm gonna be editing off of, I now create a folder called Lightroom Project File, right? And then I go into Lightroom Classic, and I go to File, I go to New Catalog, and I'm going to save it to uh, that folder. So Weddings. Uh, Julie Lightroom project file. And I'm going to save it as Julie and Cameron wedding photos. 
Boom. All right, create. All right, and so the reason I'm using Lightroom Classic, guys, instead of Lightroom to do my wedding photos is because uh, you can edit off an external drive. So you don't need to have everything synced to a cloud. And this is super important because uh, if you try to do your wedding business off of Lightroom regular, where it syncs to the cloud, you're gonna, you're gonna run out of storage after a while. And it's gonna be a headache and you're going to have to uh, freaking delete stuff and then years down the line you're gonna have to like re-add those so yeah i'm gonna come into here i'm going to add them i'm going to just add them right here i'm gonna build previews uh standard and yeah i'm going to import these photos booyah all right, so now I have my Lightroom Classic catalog all set up and ready to go. The importing phase is done, okay? So I know that was a lot of information and I'll also have the step-by-steps in the description if you got lost in this video. All right, so now we have finally finished importing the photos and pulling selects. That's always a very tedious part. But now we're at the fun part. This is where you get your iPad. This is where you get your headphones and your coffee. And this is where you zone out and you just, you know, edit some photos. So these photos that I've put on my iPad, like I said, are going are the banger photos. They are the photos I'm gonna be sending them as teasers. They're also gonna be the photos I post on Instagram and maybe I'll put them on my website. So for this demonstration, we are going to be using my wedding presets. They are also for sale on my store if you wanna help support the channel. It's called Tropical Vows. And these are the presets I use for my bread and butter for my six figure wedding business. So if you guys are interested in kind of supporting the channel and upping your Lightroom game, be sure to check out the link in the description to download these wedding presets. But let's just get into it. Okay, cool. So here's a picture of her kind of hanging out. Let's try one of my presets. Let's kind of look through this. You know, just see which one looks good. Ooh, I like the, I like the kawaii adventure one. It's like a muted, this one's kind of like my muted green, kind of less contrast. Hey, yeah, you can kind of see that before and after. Cool, that's nice, let's keep going. Awesome, this is kind of like a silhouette. Ooh, I like that. So I have two black and white presets. One is Forevermore and the other one is Linen Tuxedo. Uh, Kind of like Forevermore. That looks sick. So I'll just straighten the horizon line on this one. So the thing about using presets is sometimes they work right off the bat. Other times you're gonna need to adjust a lot and the presets are just a starting point. Uh, for these two photos, the presets look pretty fine because I did everything correct in camera. But let's just keep going. It's like, see how the preset is just kind of like, just kind of working, I think. I think Dream Day was the best for this one. Yeah, I like that. That looks sick. Cool. Keep going. Ooh, I like Hawaii Halo. That looks sick. So I remember rule of thirds right here. I like this because there's like leading lines going up to them. I think that's really cool. And there's also like these kind of like, uh, structures which are kind of giving them like a, a frame so there's like trees and bushes uh, as you can tell it's a little too orangey so i'm gonna have to like take down their skin just a little bit it looks a little too orange yeah you always want to make sure the skin's right man if the skin's not right then it's not right you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i kind of like this one black and white that looks pretty cool yeah, so that preset just right off the bat made it look pretty cool. All right, this is a ceremony one. Let's use tropical vows. See, slap on that preset, butter baby. So this is why I use presets, dude. Like I said, if y'all wanna support the channel, I'm broke as hell right now. So supports the iPad videos, get the presets. Boom. Yeah, and before, after, perfect. Maybe add a little bit more exposure. Sweet. Ooh, crispy, buttery, and crispy. Hang this one up on your wall, dude. You're welcome. Okay, so just edited all the banger photos. I'm gonna go and kind of select which ones I really like. 
So what I love about I, I, Apple products is AirDrop. It just makes it so easy to transfer photos so you don't lose any quality with them. If you have Android, you can use like Dropbox or some other form of transfer to get them to your phone. All right, so now I have all the pictures on my phone. I am going to use this app called Scroll, S-C-R-L, Scroll, and we are going to be creating a carousel for Instagram. So I'm going to start adding some photos to them. Obviously I want to choose like the most banging photo for it. I don't know which one that is, sadly. Maybe I'll do this one as the banger. All right, see I'm kind of just creating like a layout right here. And you can get as creative as you want with scroll. I try not to spend too much time on it. Like I said, I'm just trying to import footage, hurry and edit some photos and send them out as quick as possible. And the reason you create a, like a cool artistic scroll is because you want to look a little bit different than everybody on Instagram just posting regular photos. And it's just fun to make the scroll um, carousels. So yeah, now I have finished the scroll carousel. I'm going to post out on Instagram. I'm going to tag the wedding planners. I'm going to tag the couple. I'm going to tag anyone involved with the event. All right, so let's just recap on what I did. I edited all the banger photos on my iPad with my Tropical Vows preset pack. I airdropped the good photos I wanted to use for Instagram onto my phone. And then I created a carousel using the app Scroll. And so now I am done with the initial importing and sending teaser photos. That is like phase one of the workflow. And this is when you can kind of take a break and edit the photos whenever you get a chance. You don't have to edit all your wedding photos the day after. A lot of photographers are super procrastinators, but I recommend you try to get stuff done as soon as possible. You don't want any backlog. Backlog is your enemy. All right, so we are back on the desktop computer and now I'm in Lightroom Classic. I'm gonna pretend that I've edited all of these photos already and now we're going to export them to deliver them using a service called PicTime. If you haven't used PicTime before, I recommend it. It's really cool. It just looks really nice. It has an online store where they can buy prints. And if you don't have a lot of money, you can also do the free version um, and you can upload a gallery, deliver a gallery, and then just delete the gallery after like 30 days or something after they download it and just free up the space so you can just keep using it like that. I won't do like a full in-depth tutorial, but basically you just upload your photos and there you go. So I'll show you like a full, what a finished album looks like. So here's one I shot the other day. So we'll preview this gallery. And this is what it looks like when it is all done. So you have like a nice cover photo. You got some branding there. Yeah, and you kind of go through this and here is what a finished album looks like. But after everything's uploaded into pick time, we can deliver it to the clients and you can do that right here through the share function. You basically just type in their email and their name and you send it and boom, the photos are now been delivered to the client. So there's one last step to finish this complete workflow and it is going to be archiving your photos on the cloud. So what I'd use is Dropbox. Dropbox is kind of like my online archive and it's, I really like doing Dropbox because sometimes like I won't have a client's gallery on PicTime anymore. I'll delete it to free up storage. And I've gotten like a couple emails the last couple months of people saying, hey, I can't find my photos. And that's why I keep everything um, archived on Dropbox, even wedding films and photos so that if I ever need to deliver it again to a client, I can just go into Dropbox. It's all organized and right there. So we'll go to my, so I have Dropbox connected to my Mac. So I'll show you guys kind of my Dropbox workflow. So basically going to Bodhi Weddings, photography, 2024. I've only done one photo shoot, I think this year, but we'll go 2023. And basically you can see everything is somewhat organized. I should probably come back here and do it. But so all of my photos are now on Dropbox. And so that's kind of like the final step is to archive things on Dropbox. So. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You just upload things to Dropbox to archive them. And it's a really good way to do that. So here's some photos. I just dragged those on to 2024. And now when it is uploaded to Dropbox, I know I am completely finished. So now I go back to my projects folder and I go to my weddings and I go back and I will delete those weddings off of my editing drive because they're already backed up on my external hard drive and now they're also archived into Dropbox. So now we are good to go. All right, well, that is the tutorial. I hope you guys got some value out of this. Please hit the like and subscribe button to support the channel. Also, make sure to download my preset pack in the description below to up your wedding photo game. Uh, thanks again for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, comment them down below and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. But until next time, go out and take some dope photos. Yeah, peace.